What's up guys, I'm Dave Klein, and welcome back to my Dark Souls lore series. Today, we're going to talk about the character who is the main influence behind Lordran, as the ruler over Anorlando, and the leader in the war against dragons. It's time to talk about Gwyn, Lord of Sunlight and Cinder. Then, from the dark, they came, and found the souls of lords within the flame. Gwyn, the Lord of Sunlight, and his faithful knights. With the strength of lords, they challenged the dragons. Gwyn's mighty bolts peeled apart their stone skins. After winning his war with the dragons, Gwyn built a mighty kingdom that of Anor Londo, which would become a kingdom for the gods. Here, Gwyn reigned as the supreme god over others, and was worshipped by lesser beings. His influence spread throughout the lands, far beyond just Lordran, and in particular into Thorland. In Thorland, the White Seance Ring was entrusted to the head bishop of the Way of White, an apostle to Allfather Lloyd, uncle to Lord Gwyn. The head bishop of the Way of White is the guardian of law and caste, and one of the great royals of Thorland. We know thanks to the White Seance Ring, Gwyn actually had an uncle, Allfather Lloyd, and it seems he spread the gospel of Gwyn deeply into Thorland. The Covenant, the Way of White, is a covenant deeply rooted in worshipping the gods, and in using faith and miracles. As the head honcho of the gods, it would seem the Way of White is, in fact, worshipping Lord Gwyn. Gwyn's sunlight miracles require faith, his daughter Guinevere's miracles require faith as well, and the covenant was spread by his very uncle, thus seeming to cement the relationship. The influence of the Way of White and worshipping Gwyn spread even further than simply Thorland. The coins we find as human currency in the game depict various important figures on them, and the gold coin, the most valuable of all, is a coin made of gold, with Allfather Lloyd and his white halo shown on its face, clearly indicating a widespread belief and worship in Gwyn and the gods of Lordran. As the leader of the gods, Lord Gwyn's means of payment and gratitude seem to lie within giving his loyal subjects fragments of his lord soul, and thus giving them power. Gwyn's soul tells us, Lord Gwyn bequeathed most of his power to the gods, and burned as cinder for the first flame, but even so, Lord Gwyn's soul is a powerful thing indeed. It was this power that allowed him to rule, as well as reward his subjects. For Cease betraying the dragons and fighting for Gwyn's cause, Gwyn bequeathed him a Lord Soul Shard. Seath allied with Lord Gwyn and turned upon the dragons, and for this he was awarded dukedom, embraced by the royalty and given a fragment of a great soul. Gwyn even granted Seath a royal archive where he could conduct his research in peace. We know from the soul of Ornstein that special beings have special souls. Lord Gwyn granted this soul to his foremost trusted knights. Again, we see Gwyn rewarding those in his service with fragments of his soul, albeit smaller fragments it would seem. Gwyn's foremost trusted knights, Ornstein, Artorius, Goth, and Kieran all would have received these fragmented souls, as well as special rings to indicate their rank. Ornstein, the Leo, Artorius, the Wolf, Goth, the Hawk, and Kieran, the Hornet. After the war against the dragons, Gwyn sent his knights to hunt down and kill the last remaining of the dragons. Ah, dragon slaying, knighthood's highest calling. And effectively, Gwyn wiped out most of the dragons from existence. Meanwhile, Gwyn was active in maintaining his power and extending his influence. In New Londo, a city built as an extension of Anor Londo for the common folk, Gwyn chose four kings to rule and bequeathed them a Lord Soul Shard as well. Lord Gwyn recognized the foresight of these four great leaders of New Londo and granted them their ranks and fragments of his Lord Soul. This was presumably in exchange for their loyalty, a mistake in the end. This method seemed to lead Anorlando to a long prosperity, however, trouble was brewing in the form of a fading flame. The fire that led to the gods' reign and prosperity was dying. 
an attempt to duplicate the first flame. The Witch of Izalith accidentally created the Chaos Flame, leading to her transformation into the Bed of Chaos and thus creating all demons. These demons attempted to leave Izalith and the demon's ruins, leading to the demon war. We know thanks to the Black Knight weapons, they were weapons of the Black Knights who wander Lordran, used to face Chaos Demons. Gwyn, using his trust in the Elite Knights, fought back the demons, forcing them into submission. Quaylog's cut dialogue further tells us that their punishment was to remain within the realm whence they came. Go back, forbidden be these parts. The realm of the creatures of Chaos. They accept their banished fate. Further trouble came in the form of the Occult Rebellion. While the Rebellion was ill-fated, it seemed the Occult found what the gods and specifically Gwyn feared most, the Dark. And while the Occult Rebellion did fail, a new trouble was brewing out of the Fading Flame, a spreading darkness that threatened Gwyn and all he had worked for. Now, during the time of Gwyn's reign, he had three children, an eldest-born son who inherited the sunlight of Lord Gwyn, but had respect only for arms and nothing else. Perhaps for his lust for war, the eldest son's foolishness led to a loss of the annals and rescinding of his deific status. Today, even his name is not known. Gwyn's secondborn was a daughter, Guinevere, who was a princess cherished by all. She would eventually leave Anorlando along with many other deities and later became wife to flame god Flan. So all that was left was Gwendolyn, Gwyn's last born son. The power of the moon was strong in Gwendolyn, and thus he was raised as a daughter. For more details on Gwendolyn, a vital character to the story and lore of Dark Souls, make sure to check out my Gwendolyn lore video. Now, one question that remains unclear is, who was Gwyn's wife? Was she, as some have suggested, Velka due to Gwendolyn's taking on similar responsibilities of tracking down the guilty? Or perhaps, as my buddy John Quick suggests, was she an unknown goddess with an affinity to the moon, and thus the reason it was presumed to be a feminine trait? All good things must come to an end. While Gwyn successfully created a kingdom and established himself as a god, the first flame only continued to dwindle. In a last ditch attempt to save his kingdom and all he had fought to create, Gwyn decided to do the unspeakable, sacrifice himself to save his kingdom. Lord Gwyn, bearer of the ultimate soul, divided that power among his great clan before linking the flame, but he did keep his crown, perhaps to preserve a symbol of the monarch, for its actual power had fully subsided. Gwyn continued his status to the very end, donning his crown even as he marched into the kiln of the first flame where he burned as cinder for the first flame. And while, for a time, this was enough to continue his beloved Age of Fire, all good things must come to an end. Gwyn survived the linking of the flame and remained in the kiln as a hollowed out version of a once great monarch, a lord of sunlight turned into a lord of cinder. And while all others assumed he was dead, even building a tomb in his honor, in the kiln he remained, a shell waiting to be bested by a new potential sacrifice to his great kingdom. Alright guys, that wraps up my Gwyn lore video. Who do you think Gwyn's wife was, and do you think she's even a character we've heard about in the game? Also, I know Terramantis is working on a Gwyn video as well, so make sure to check that out when he finishes. And for a great video on the Way of White, I highly recommend Epic Name Bros video detailing just that. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.